What's up YouTube? Three weeks ago I did a video on altering my buy strategy and in today's episode I'm going to show you what the culmination of all three weeks of trading and readjusting my stack looks like all in one. Now you've seen a few of my videos over the past three weeks put together slowly so today I'm going to put it all together and let you see what I got. And in this particular package is from a trade with Ducks Butt. Uh, we did another earlier transaction for some Morgans, and this time I had something that he wanted, and we ended up doing a trade. In previous videos, I talked about readjusting my stack because I got a little numismatic heavy, and in particular, NGC or slabbing uh, a bit too much. I was trying to buy coins for the sake of slabbing versus trying to pick coins out, which uh, was the better way to do it. So if you recall, I had a bunch of two and a half dollar and ten dollar Indians that mostly came back AU details and that just wasn't fitting right with me. I, I felt like I had overpaid and I just wanted to swap it out for some weight. I decided at that point three weeks ago that I wanted to convert into some bullion. In this particular trade, Ducks and I did a somewhat of a GSR swap. He wanted the 1914D and I wanted his Geiger bars. and he also threw in a one ounce JM Mathy bar. The two high relief kookaburras aren't part of the deal and were mainly sent to me so that I could have a look at them to see if they were worth grading. What the deal did consist of was a 250 gram bar, a 100 gram bar, uh, Geiger bar, and a one ounce Johnson Mathy bar. I never really got into the one ounce JM bars, but recently I picked up two, so I guess it's almost a trend. Uh, on top of that, I've never owned a Geiger bar, and I've never seen one, so it was an intriguing deal. It's something that I wanted to take a look at. Uh, I like the fact that they are in grams, so I saw in Hi Ho's video that he likes the Geigers, so now I have a couple. Taking a look at the two ultra high reliefs, it looks like they are good to be sent in. They don't have any issues, the fields are pretty much flawless. No rubs and no, no issues. So I think these will be good to go to NGC with a tiny stacker submission. The only thing holding me back is the 10 one ounce proof Libertads that I ordered, which were supposed to arrive last month, so I think I'm just going to send it in probably this coming week because it's getting a little bit long. Anyways, back to the deal. 250 grams plus 100 grams plus one ounce. I didn't know how much that actually ended up weighing in ounces. So I got my scale out and decided to take a look to see how many troy ounces it would be. And once I put them all together, it's a total of 12 and a quarter ounces. When factoring the numismatic premium of the Indian and the premium on the Geiger bar, it ends up being really close to a GSR swap. So I'm just a little bit lower at uh, probably 62, 63 to 1. This next trade was an even swap. I wanted to fill in a hole in my Panda collection and I put out, originally I was going to sell one, one of my coins, but it just so happened that someone else had the coin I was looking for and offered to trade. This trade actually worked for both of us because we didn't have to spend any extra money and we got what the other was looking for. It also might lead to future trades, so I'm looking forward to that. The best part is no additional money in or out. It's just a straight up trade. And this is a 2007 MS70 1 tenth ounce gold 50 yuan panda. This rounds out my MS70 collection on 1 tenth pandas from 2001 to 2016. I have the 2000 MS70 Panda on the way from another separate upgrade. The only MS70 in that date round that I'm missing is the 2002 which runs for about 3200 which is completely out of my price range. So while I've been relatively quiet with Pandas I'm gonna use that numismatic gain in order to upgrade parts of my stack and you'll see that in future videos. Moving on, I was able to pick up my second 10 ounce Lunar Monkey for a dollar over spot from where it's at today, which is a great deal in my opinion, so I had to pull the trigger. 
These were only available at Atmex for a while, but recently came in stock at JM Bullion and Provident. So get it while it lasts. Next up is the 10 Sharks for under spot, which was a great deal and several people took advantage of it. Thanks Luz and Louie for that public notice. You really got to give it up to GovMint for having the best deals of the year and especially under spot. No other competitor can say that so it almost justifies their high end prices on other pieces. At the current rate that's three dollars under spot and it was only a week ago. Yeah, Can you believe that? So I went back to where I bought the JM bar the other day and I asked the guy what else he had and he brought out a roll of OPM metals one ounce silver rounds where I made an offer under spot at the time and he reluctantly agreed to it. This is the power of relationships apparently and I'm so glad he, he didn't kick me out of the store at that point. I was like come on man let's do this where he reluctantly agreed and let me let it go for 360. With that said Shout out to BSO coming at you one more time for teaching me that little trick. I always asked him how to do it and he basically said just keep on going. Thankfully I've learned a lot of little tricks out there in YouTube land. A lot of the people who create the content have graciously provided and shared what methods they use to kind of get some deals out there. And we're not working too hard to take advantage of the other. Ultimately, it's just we're all looking for a good deal, which the other can be happy and go out and fight another day or buy another day. I will say I've moved a lot of different items in my stack in order to kind of pay for all of this. As I mentioned, the whole goal was to make it as close to net zero as possible, so no new money. It's all pre-existing in the stack. It's just coins that I didn't want got moved and are on the chopping block if they haven't already been moved. And if I did put a little extra money in, then hopefully it'll be replenished as soon as I move some other items. The main goal is to always have some cash on hand when a deal presents itself. Or to kind of make a deal happen when you have a nice item that you don't really need anymore. Like those $10 Indians, they are in demand. I ended up keeping all my graded Indians and moving the AU details. I may have some stragglers still in the stack, but I'll probably offload those because like in the market, when you have some losers, you gotta. it's better to take a little bit of a loss than to keep holding on to something that does nothing. It's better to take your money out and put it elsewhere in something more productive. And what you're seeing is what my thoughts are about that. I'm taking my money out. I didn't really lose too much money. I did lose some value, but I can hold on to it because of the gold value or the intrinsic value. I do have to make one correction from my last video. I misspoke. I didn't mean that I was taking all my money out of the stock market. I'm only taking out a percentage in order to balance my portfolio. So the pieces that you're seeing are the result of a lot of wheeling and dealing or what you would call hustling to try to get coins at under spot. The average cost of this entire stack is roughly $21 an ounce. $20.50 to $21 an ounce. So at near spot, even with the premium items. So to recap, in the last three weeks since I made the video where I said I was going to do it, this is the result. It's about 200 ounces converted from high premium numismatic gold and silver into lower to mid premium bullion. It's okay that I got rid of some of the gold Indians and the seven coin Libertad proof set. Ultimately, my stack is better able to handle GSR conversions, spot increases that don't correlate to GSR conversions or still have some semi numismatic appreciation. I'm kind of all over the place but there is a method to the madness. I do have a plan and I'm kind of sticking with it. I just wanted to make this video to kind of show you guys what I started planning three weeks ago and kind of put it all together in one video so that you can see 
exactly what I'm talking about and how I've moved certain pieces. I still have some things coming in, but uh, they're not here yet. It's a few small items, so I thought this was enough. Anytime I'm able to move pennies, nickels, dimes, any sort of numismatic item that I got from that estate sale, I converted. Uh, or if I was able to find a relatively acceptable premium numismatic item like the tiger and ox and dragon at close to monkey prices, I went for it. Before signing off, I also want to say thank you to each and every one of you who've commented on my videos. I sincerely appreciate it and I'm humbled by some of the comments that I read. I try to answer each and every question, but sometimes I get a little busy. I've been trying something new with my commentary and it seems like there's also been an uptick in views as Silver Slacker has also noted because of the recent rise. So I've tried to break things down a little bit more than I normally would. So sorry if I haven't responded, try on newer videos and thank you so much for watching my videos. I have fun producing them. It takes some time, so I appreciate everyone else who does it. Uh, and if you like, please comment, like, and subscribe. And even you got a thumbs down, guys. Thanks for watching.